Hello and welcome to Morning File. I'm your host, Emma McCarty, and today I am joined with Natalie Loveless, the curator for the Immune Nations exhibition currently happening at the McMaster Museum of Art. Um, so to start off the interview, did you maybe just want to give um, an overview of the current exhibition, the idea behind it, its purpose? Sure, sure. And I'll say, um, I am, first of all, really grateful to Carol Podsworthy, the director of the McMaster Museum of Art, for inviting the exhibition to McMaster. I'm a professor um, at the University of Alberta um, in Edmonton. And the exhibition initially began, um, it was the brainchild, really, of Dr. Stephen Hoffman. Um, Stephen Hoffman is a professor of global health law and political science at York University, though he was then at the University of Ottawa, and he's the director of something called the Global Strategy Lab, and also now a scientific director at CIHR for their Institute of Population and Public Health. Um, that's the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. So his area of research really is global health, global health policy, and he knew about a few exhibitions that a colleague of mine, Sean Caulfield, a master printmaker here at the University of Alberta, had done in collaboration with his brother, um, Tim Caulfield, who's a, um, a law professor and science writer and thinker. And Stephen was um, really uh, impressed, and I will apologize ahead of time, Stephen, if I'm mischaracterizing, um, <laughs> but, but, you know, Stephen was really impressed with the projects that they collaboratively devised that brought artists in together with scientists and policymakers to address pressing global concerns and or hot button issues like stem cell research, um, issues that were often divisive. Um, in um, kind of in the in the popular imaginary, things that would um, kind of really cause um, um, how do I want to put it? This is one of those pause moments. Um, you know, yeah, issues that were really divisive in the public arena, and bringing art together with science and policy mm -hmm. to help create a different access to those conversations and debates. And so, Stephen approached Sean and myself to develop this project on global vaccination largely funded by the Research Council of Norway, but also with funds from the Research Council of Canada, the Social Science and Humanities Research Council of Canada. And the three of us together devised this project that brought uh, scientists and artists and policymakers and humanities thinkers together from the get-go. So it wasn't scientists providing information and artists illustrating the information or devising a way to communicate the information, but really artists and scientists and policymakers thinking together um, and really grappling with how to do collective research, collective interdisciplinary research, and then devise public artistic projects that were co-created. So the artists and the scientists and the policymakers all are authors of the works. They're all the artists, right? And all they and um, and so it was a really, really um, interesting and innovative methodological project at the beginning, mm -hmm. and it involved us doing um, a multi uh, a years of workshops together, where we got to know each other and really researched um, hot button issues around global vaccination together. And then we were invited to both mount an initial version at the Trondheim um, Academy of Art in 2017, and then at UNAIDS building um, in Geneva during the 2017 World Health Organization Annual Assembly. Mm -hmm. And there we had a large, large event that brought in dignitaries from around the world to think through the power of art to help create um, uh, the conditions to have complex conversations around hot button issues that bring in um, empathy um, and understanding for differences of opinions. And that was all pre-COVID. <laughs> and then we were invited by Carol to bring the exhibition to the Master Museum of Art. Um, a number of the artists in the exhibition have previous relationships with the museum. So we were a known quantity and we were invited and then COVID hit. And it was canceled. Uh, sorry, not canceled. It was postponed. Mm -hmm. um, and in that kind of year long break, um, we invited the artists, uh, those who were able to, to develop new works uh, responding to COVID in particular. Mm -hmm. And those are also now at the exhibition that is up. Yeah, it's, it's such an interesting um, 
idea to me to be able to bring in so many different disciplines. And then in that sense, you can connect with so many different people. And then on top of that, to have COVID come in mm -hmm. while all of that's going on. Yeah. And yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I, so I was going to touch on um, the whole COVID pandemic with this situation. So obviously it was created um, beforehand, but it's really relevant to what we're currently going through. Um, how do you think that it connects um, even further now that we are dealing with all these mass vaccinations and everything like that? So um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by connect further, but, yeah, but I, I just, will, yeah. I mean, um, so do you think that the pandemic propelled the project forward more quickly as, I mean, the whole mm. world was mm. suddenly exposed to yeah, this interesting. Type. Yeah, interesting question. Um, so uh, it's not that the pandemic um, propelled anything further um, in the sense that these were already uh, key issues, long standing issues, all of the issues that are addressed in the exhibition from um, herd immunity, to the cold chain, to vaccine, vaccination fear, to um, lack of public trust in science. All of these issues were already, um, they are long-standing issues um, since the invention of vaccines. Mm -hmm. But COVID-19 brought it to the fore in a, um, un, in, I would say, un, um, predictable, unprecedented way. But my colleagues uh, and, uh, you know, um, the the colleagues um, on on this project who work in global health would say um, no it was entirely predictable mm -hmm. um, it was it wasn't about if it was about when um, and we uh, no one no one imagined it would happen during the life of this project but it was one of the conversations that were um, that we were having while developing the project right and and so in some ways this makes the project more urgent than ever. Mm -hmm. um, as many of us are experiencing uh, divisive family conversations, social conversations, um, workplace conversations with a, um, a, a myriad of different responses to uh, COVID-19 protocols um, and interpretations um, and angers and um, loneliness and fear and, you know, this uh, the incredible complexity of emotions that um, have affected all of us, right? Mm -hmm. And while we were working on the project, it was all conceptual, right? It was conceptual. Yeah. We were talking through all of these um, issues um, and it is no longer conceptual. It's in everybody's home, right? It's in, mm -hmm. it's a, you know, uh, so, so it, did it propel something new? The, there are some new works and the new works reflect the urgency of the moment. Mm -hmm. Right, though the topics are the same, right? Yeah. So, for example, Sean Caulfield uh, developed a new work called Infodemic or hashtag Infodemic with um, Sue Kohlberg, um, a professor here at the U of A as well, and that work is covering the same theme as the initial work he had produced called the Vaccine, um, the Anatomy Table. Um, there was also the vaccine picture and those worked together. But the anatomy table was about loss, loss of public trust in science um, and kind of fears and anxieties that circulate um, in the popular imaginary surrounding vaccines. And the new work is addressing the very same issue, but with a kind of um, poignancy in the text mm -hmm. that um, to me really... Uh, hammers home the urgency of the moment um, and the the, and the urgency. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how to be more coherent about that right now. Yeah. It really does. The work really does move, move me. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that was going to be um, actually my next question for you. I was going to say, how does the work um, differ that the artist decided to do during the pandemic? But I guess it is longstanding issues. So it's just taking maybe conceptual ideas and sh sh demonstrating to people that you know, this is act like exactly what's happening currently as well. It is, and then um, for one of the one of the works, um, the new works by um, Arman Yeritsyan. Um, sorry, let me say that again. Arman Yeritsyan and Makritich Tonian. It's uh, 
a short film um, called Antisocial Distancing. Mm -hmm. And that work is um, a documentary footage taken um, in, in Armenia and um, interviews with folks on the ground who um, have bombs falling and can't get access to, you know, personal protective equipment um, and are really struggling with kind of life and death, um, you know, the, the life and death aspect of COVID alongside the life and death aspect of bombs falling and showing the kind of different ways in which um, this experience is articulated in different geographic regions. Yeah. So there's a way in which the, um, the urgency and poignancy of this moment has been brought into the exhibition alongside um, other um, longer standing research based works. Yeah, yeah, which is truly amazing, really. You, I mean, you think of COVID and us sitting here in Canada can think of it maybe as more of a separate issue, but when you think about it combined with all the other issues going on in the world, people are just facing so many different things in addition to a pandemic, mm -hmm. which I think is really highlighted well. Um, so obviously there's a film aspect to it. What other types of um, work can people expect to see in the exhibition? It's, um, it really is a, such a truly interdisciplinary exhibition, not only at the level of the folks who came together to co-conceive of it and co-create it, but also in terms of the media mm -hmm. that is displayed. Um, and so in some ways, I think of the entire exhibition as an installation, as a work. The pieces, um, they speak to each other. Um, there are different moments of uh, contemplation in front of, say, print works or photographic works that have um, a, a quiet um, and uh, reflective um, kind of aesthetic to them. There are other moments that are kind of, um, more kind of documentary, both with um, anti-social distancing, but also upstream the cold chain by Jesper Albier. Um, these works have a kind of informational aspect to them, right? Um, and so there's a, a, this a really wonderful work by Kazukowski called um, A Conversation um, with Vaccine Hesitant um, Parents. Mm -hmm. And in that work, you have vaccine hesitant parents describing how they understand vaccines such that they choose not to vaccinate their children. Um, and their narrative is treated with respect and understanding, but also paired with a conversation with a vaccine scientist explaining mm -hmm. how vaccines work. And so there's a very gentle way in which um, a conversation across what often is really divisive difference is kind of um, held together um, with respect and a desire for kind of continuing the conversation instead of simply disagreeing and walking off in your separate ways. Mm -hmm. right? And that's something that is more important now than ever to learn how to really speak to each other across ideological difference, political difference, differences that break up friendships and families. Um, if there is uh, one thing that I would love to have emerge from this exhibition, it's uh, an invitation for all of us to bring compassion and care, especially to those with whom we differ, not because we need to agree with them, but because we need to keep having these conversations in order to move forward in a better way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, it, sorry, I was just gonna good. say, there was also one, one aspect I didn't uh, mention yet of the exhibition is in addition to kind of print and photo and um, video based works, there are also a couple installations um, that are interactive. Um, and that one of them is um, actively interactive uh, as you can kind of participatory as you play the fictional shadow pox game um, and actually which is a, a, a wonderful interactive game where you have the, uh, the kind of the shadow pox on your body and you need to push it off of your body um, but also you're choosing kind of what country you're in and whether to vaccinate or not and you're seeing the effects of your decision and that whole work is both fictional and interactive, but also based on real science. So the information you're getting about you know, the effects of your choices to vaccinate or not vaccinate and where you are and what you're doing, all of those are based on real science. So you can see um, in this um, beautifully visualized way um, what happens when you, like how many people you infect, right? Yeah, yeah. Not to vaccinate in certain contexts. 
Yeah. And I know you, I mean, you've mentioned it a, a several times, but about how these are ongoing issues and they've always been ongoing issues. But I think with these type of um, exhibitions, the most important thing to come out of it is discussion and the fact that we now have um, COVID. So many more people um, will, will be drawn to the exhibition. They can relate to it. And that just continues to increase discussion. Um, so maybe more of a fun question. I'm not sure if you have an answer to this or not, but do you um, personally have a favorite piece in the exhibition? Uh, I think the, um, I, I really don't. And I know that that's like politic to say, mm -hmm. um, but it's also, it's true. And I'll tell you why. Uh, it's true because I really don't, uh, I don't relate to the exhibition as a series of individual works. I see it as a collective group conversation. And so the installation itself, the entire exhibition is an experience, right? You're moved um, from kind of more contemplative and emotional moments, mm -hmm. um, say with Kaizukowski's Hug, which is a photographic work that um, I think does a beautiful job of um, metaphorizing, creating a, um, uh, an, an image of um, both kind of isolation and desire for touch, right, which so many of us have felt over the course of the past mm -hmm. 18 months. And so poignant moments like that, um, with fun moments um, like playing with shadow pox to really um, informational um, moments like being in the disimmunization station installation and hearing this beautiful soundtrack of um, an imagined um, vaccine moving through the body alongside uh, historic information about kind of um, these these um, little uh, found footage pieces from vaccine history, mm. right? Um, really bringing into our awareness the fact that these issues are longstanding. Yeah. So the exhibition is yeah it does does evidently it all works together. Um, so I guess my last question for you then, aside from, you know, visiting the McMaster Museum of Art, where can people go to learn more about uh, the exhibition? Well, we have a website, immunations.com. Well, let me confirm that. Is it? Uh, I think we've got, we have both immunations.com and CA, but yes, immunations.com. So if you go to um, immunations.com, I-M-M-U-N-E, N A T I O N S dot com, all one word. There is a virtual exhibition tour on there. Um, there's information about all of the works and the artists and the the um, kind of background of the project. But also, there's information on upcoming panels. We have um, just had our first panel. It was October fourteenth. Um, it was called "Ensuring Equitable Access: Life Saving Vaccines During COVID nineteen and Beyond." And we have two that are coming up. One is about the method, right? That the, the method that we devised to create this project, and that is on research creation and global crisis. And that panel is on interdisciplinarity, creativity, and collaboration, and the importance of all of those for um, mobilizing artistic um, methods, artistic literacies, artistic outputs for pressing global problems, including COVID-19, but also climate change. And then in December, that one is on November 25th. And then on December 9th, we have our final panel, which is vaccine confidence, fear, and misinformation in an age of COVID. And that one will really address lack of public trust in science and um, uh, kind of this post-truth <laughs> world yeah. that we're in and, and ask some serious questions about um, what we can do to uh, be, you know, better informed global citizens, um, you know, when it, and, uh, you know, if, if anything has brought to the fore the urgent need for critical thinking um, and interdisciplinary and collaborative engagement, um, it is the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you so much to Natalie Loveless for joining me today to talk about the Immune Nations exhibition currently happening at the McMaster Museum of Art. For more information on Immune Nations, you can click the link below. And as always, for more Morning File content, you can visit cfmu.ca.